Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, and this time with episode number 12 of my What Makes It Work series, and this one's entitled Billy the Big Mouth Bass and How He Works. So I'm going to take this apart here in just a minute so you can see this, but uh, this is me. It's a picture on my iPhone in the summer of 2015 uh, catching Billy, just for your information. Maybe more than you want to know. But uh, this is a, a gift that is given to many men around Christmas or to boys or whatever. Maybe women too, I don't know, but I think it's a gag gift for, for men. And they're not cheap, but I paid 50 cents for this at a garage sale. And uh, I intend to uh, skin this fish. Well, these are pretty annoying. Any mother that has one of these in the house hates it. And, you know, there's music played along with this. But I'm not going to... Uh, play that music for you because, and there's two different songs on there, because this is uh, would be copyrighted music and I can't play that on uh... you know this video is all about levity and having a little fun so we're just, I'm just taking a break from the more serious things that I do and, and hope you enjoy this but uh, mothers often take the batteries out of these because uh, they're so annoying but uh, doesn't take children long to figure that out and they buy another eight dollars worth of batteries to put in there but uh, let me show you the permanent way of fixing that uh, mothers I took the back off of Billy the Big Mouth Bass and uh, there's about six screws or so but uh, smart mothers from coast to coast do this they simply cut one wire off the speaker and the job is done put it back together and you can have peace again and not have to throw this away but most of these are kept in the attic uh, so that uh, people aren't annoyed by them and uh, I'm sure most of them have been thrown away after the novelty wears off but uh, with that closed up uh, or cut off like that we can close it back up and at least see the uh, the antics of Billy now in this video I uh, will make no attempt to, to explain how uh, uh, the electronics of it work because I probably can't do that anyway but uh, let me uh, put that cover back on real quick and you can see him squirming around there of course is a uh, on and off switch here that will help uh, turn it off younger kids won't understand that or will they'll just think that it doesn't work but uh, once you got the uh, the speaker turned off, you know, you're going to see that this Billy does all kinds of crazy things, flipping around, and that, that's what I want to show you how that works. I'm sure there's little motors in there. I don't even know myself yet how it works. It's pretty clever, though. You must admit. This is something they probably sold in Bass Pro Shops, I don't know. Because this is garage sale stuff. Alright, let me clean this fish. Let me gut him. When I whipped out my filleting knife, my old Chicago, or Chicago cutlery, the Traveler, Billy started squirming. But I'm not sure just what kind of edge I got this on, so I'm just going to use a razor blade. What do you think, Billy? You know, often a fish is still wiggling when you clean them, but uh, we cut their head off and that soon puts an end to that. But let me uh, cut him from stem to stern, stern here and let's see what we got. No blood yet. Thank goodness. Cut him right behind the front of the gills here. Hope there's no eggs in here. I don't know. Well, it's this is a man, so we got him pretty well skinned here. Oh, he's still screaming. Got to cut a little more off his gills, and then we'll take a look. I'm going to pull this foam out. That's just filler. Settle down, Billy. Pretty interesting.
Call your kids in to see this. They might enjoy this. And let your neighbor know about it if he's a fisherman. But you can see this is what flaps his tail. So we got a little actuator or motor in here. And I'm going to open that up in a second too. And then on the front here, if I can get him to open his mouth, Cut this just a little bit here by his lips. Well, I cut his lips back a little bit, and you can see that this is the actuator here for his mouth. And that's also a little motor. I gotta pull the space back a little bit. I know there's people that are gonna object to this because whenever I take something apart, somebody say, "Why'd you do that?" But you know, in America here, we have such an abundance that uh, we don't mind sacrificing something for a laugh. And there he is, in all his internal glory. Well, now my hands are going to smell like fish the rest of the day. That's no good. You know, you can't get that smell off till you uh, take about three showers. But there's only uh, about three things happening here. One is the motor or the actuator here to flap the tail. The other is the motor or actuator to uh, flap his lips. And then, right there. And the third one, of course, is, is what makes him move like this and I haven't seen him doing that lately I must have cut a nerve so let me take some of this apart and see what it looks like and whoever designed this was uh, a genius actually it's pretty amazing now to make his uh, lips move his lower lip actually is all this moving I took this cover off and one gear already fell off. I guess it's right there. Quite a gear train here. But the actual little electric motor is right here. And the gear train going all the way over to here where it, it uh, flaps the lower lip. So that's how that part of Billy works. Let's get a little deeper into the bowels. Now you can see the little motor periodically spinning and there must be a, a circuit in there. Well, we know there's a circuit or a little circuit board that is controlling this and turning the little motors on and off. Now I don't know how that works nor am I too worried about it but uh, so, so the motor is directly below this. You can't see it and let me cut some of this off. It doesn't seem to come off too readily. Now you can see the motor down in here that operates the lower jaw. Now the, the entire fish bends here and hinges from uh, this little mechanism here. So let's get into that next. I'm done up here. It's the tail flapping mechanism that does most of the work with Billy and again the motor for that is right here. And I've taken the screws out here and we'll see if we can see what it looks like inside of there. I think a gear will probably fall out and it'll stop working, but so be it. Yeah, there's some gears on the inside of this, so the motor is turning. Matter of fact, I'm touching the little gear, but no longer any action. Hear that motor groaning? That's all that's left of Billy. Well, there's a return spring on this, as you can see, as there was on uh, on his head. So it's uh, actuated in one direction and then 
uh, it's spring loaded and it returns that way. Otherwise, they'd have to have a motor reversing, uh, I would think. Reversing motor. Now, I'd like to get into this little box here and see w what's in here, but I don't see any motor connected to that, so that's still a little bit of a mystery to me. And there, there, here's the spring here, and I cut that off so I could disassemble it. It's a little torsional type spring. Now that uh, Billy's been cut in half, I can see, and it reveals the third motor, which I really couldn't see till right now, but there's a motor right there, and that is connected to the little gearbox in here, and that's what made him bend right here. So that was the front part of his body, and I can feel that motor running a little bit right now, but there's something not quite right in there. So this made his head move like this, and this motor flapped the tail, and then the third motor opened his mouth. So let me see if I can get this cover off. These are square shafts here. He's still groaning, not quite dead. Now you can see that motor that makes his front half flip operating. Sure, now it quits when I turn the camera on. There it goes. So you've seen all three motors. There's a lot of little gears in here. And don't get upset when I tell you I'm throwing this all away, because I just can't save all the little parts. And there's always somebody that says, well, you can use those in a future project, but since I'm 72, there aren't too many future projects left. I got sick of Bill. <laughs> I got sick of hearing Billy groan, so I had to take the batteries out. And... Uh, Cut those wires off here but this motor here which was the very very first motor that I saw that that is the one that is right here and, and actuated the uh, the flapping of the front half of Billy and here we have of course the motherboard I suppose we call it a motherboard which is the controller and all of the sound is evidently coming from that too because this isn't one that uses a tape or anything of that nature. Here is the uh, switch. This, I guess, I don't know if that's an earphone jack or something. Maybe that's what that was. And then there was, at this point, right here, an AC adapter. Let's see what, yeah. 6 volt AC adapter so you could run Billy perpetually. I think he probably used a lot of batteries with uh, three motors and all. Interesting here you can see all of the end mill marks left uh, from the mold because there was just no need to have that polished as opposed to the back. And you know what this says 1999 Irving Texas That, of course, is, was the speaker that I cut the wires for. And I see here there was, I just now noticed that this was a little easel type stand, so you didn't have to put it on the wall if you didn't want. You could annoy somebody from the coffee table. And that's the, I guess I meant the on and off switch, I guess. I guess. This little segment about the motherboard here is out of sequence, but you can see there's a lot of wires on here. And the wires went to the three different motors. They went to the speaker. They were in conjunction with the switch and, you know, the power supply and uh, the batteries and so on. But what the motherboard was doing was providing the music, the appropriate music, and I'm not sure where that was stored. But somehow or another, there's a chip or something here that has the music on there. And there were two songs, one being Take Me Down to the River, and I forgot what the other one was offhand. But uh, there would have been a controller here that would have told which motor to come on and when to come on and how long to stay on. And then it would signal another motor, all choreographed with the music. And that alone is uh, 
a little circuit board of wonderment that just couldn't have been produced years ago even when I was a boy so and it's all miniaturized and uh, there was no capability of, of uh, music without a record or a tape when I was young nothing but records or a radio so that is pretty amazing I'm only telling you the general principles of what it's doing I do not know how it works that is what the electricity goes to and, and so on but uh, that that's pretty neat uh, come on down Jordan Jordan's coming down now just as I've got the fish gutted here's the motherboard and of course I cannot begin to tell you what all of that does because it's not self-evident everything else in this entire toy is self-evident and funny thing is here they even had Billy's mouth painted this is the backside well I guess it had to be because it's flipped up and you can see the backside but that's all that remains now I have to go out in the backyard and dig a hole and bury this my dad would get mad if we didn't bury everything after we uh, had caught fish and cleaned them so uh, I got to go out and dig a big hole in the backyard, bury all this debris, and that completes this video on uh, what makes it work, number 12, on how Billy the Big Mouth Bass operates, and I hope you enjoyed this video and found some humor or levity or enjoyment in it. Uh, share it with your family if you do, give me good comments if you got them, and if you got bad comments, uh, please withhold them. So with all that in mind, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I hope to see you in many more of my 600 videos.